The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome all. I'm so glad that we can uh, spend this moment together and each one with themselves. Take this opportunity to really focus on yourself. So remove all distractions, cell phones, TVs, be in, a, be in a quiet place. So you really can make this moment precious for yourself. Be still for a moment. And instantaneously recognize Who's looking through your eyes? It has no name, no form, no shape, no color. It's pure, clear seeing. Just recognize what is already here. You are the stillness in the background which is already aware. attention where is the focus of attention within you allow the attention to rest or being shifted to that which is aware it knows everything and it knows itself by itself The immediate presence thoughtless being and within this being thoughts appear and disappear effortlessly by themselves And you are watching it all, seeing. Sensing the I amness of who you are, who you truly are.
Recognize the presence inside you and all around you, like space, yet it's vibrating alive, aware. Awake. Alert. As you listen to these words and guidance, pay attention from where are you listening. Are you the ultimate listener, which always aware, always awake? Listening without any preferences. Listening without ever saying anything without any thought or the voice in your head. Just the ultimate listener, seer, aware. In this webinar, what we're going to cover is uh, three things and some more. Why questioning your mind can reveal that which is already here? What does it mean to be still? And how being still sets you free immediately? Instead of sitting for a long time in meditation, I'm interested that each one of you really would notice right now what is looking through their eyes and if they have a thought right now. Look within you if you have a thought. Look for the thought. If you find a thought who is looking at the thought? If there is no thought, who is looking? Do you recognize that the looker is absolutely still, silently aware, just for an instant, know who you are and be free, just right now, just for this moment.
bask in the presence of I am. If there is an instant recognition, just keep the attention fixed on yourself without really understanding what is yourself. Just being yourself. When you allow yourself to be yourself, miracles happen within yourself. So let's begin. I'm thankful for all the people that attended, attended this webinar. It's an honor for me. It's a blessing. Why questioning your mind can reveal that which is already here? When you question your mind, it opens a window, a window, a gap between thoughts. And when this gap opens, for an instant, that which is already you shine through without any obstruct, obstruction, it just looks through into itself. And more than that, I'd like to share a quick story that I had the blessing and the grace to be in the presence of a woman who came to do the, explore what was going on for her. She had pain emotional pain trapped in her chest and was very emotional. So all that happened is that I start questioning. And as we questioned, and she questioned herself through me, what that was happening, it was taking her deep within her. As it was taking her deep within her, she was able to see. And it's what you see sets you free. So why questioning your mind can reveal that which is already here? So I see it in few layers. What is sometimes already here is emotional pain. And that emotional pain calls for our attention. It is screaming for our attention so we can really question and pay attention. So 
it starts from the emotional pain, which is a feeling that is um, manifesting in the bodily sensation as a physical reaction. And then we start to question the thoughts, the beliefs that we have, or phantom images that are trapped in the, what appears in our cellular level in the physical body. So what the beauty was in that circumstances that as we start questioning and she had the recognition of who she was as just being that which is aware, that which knows the thoughts that appear and disappear, that which knows the waves of emotion of high and low, good and bad emotions that the mind had preferences of labeling it as pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow. Then as she recognized that the one who's watching all of it is her, not as a personality, as just a presence of awareness, then we were able to go into the bodily sensation and do a journey within and just really explore what was going on. And then what she was meeting is was images, an image of herself, not her true self, an image of herself and the different interpretation of the mind that trapped that energy that was in the physical, in the cellular level. And as she was willing to go through and meet it, so the inquiry, the first step of inquiry was facing actually images, stories, memories, which were unpleasant, which were were met without any resistance. So questioning your mind enables you to meet the phantom images without any resistance. That means there is an embracing there. There is um, compassion there. There is kindness there. It allows the energy of the mind to start to flow and withdraws the energy that is trapped from whatever is trapped there. So the energies start to dissipate and that's a healing process that happens on the physical level and it happens on the emotional level and then it happens on the mental level. So inquiry into the self, you inquire into what's going on within you and you inquire into what's going on within you, that means into your physicality, emotional, discomfort, pain, you inquire into what's into the state of mind, the thoughts or beliefs that you're facing, phantom images that might appear, that you wanted to not allow it to come into the surface. And then as you go through that and there is no resistance and you allow the energy to release itself mentally even first, then it start to transform the physical because the energy that was trapped in the first place was mental. It generated the physical experience, which was emotional. So as we meet it mentally and there's no resistance, that allows to start to flow. And as that starts to flow, it withdraw the energy that is trapped on the physical. So the emotional pain or the energy that is trapped in the physical start to flow and move and release itself and free itself. And as this whole process went through and I was watching the journey and all I did is I was listening and asking the question and listening and asking another question and listening and asking another question and allowing between the questions to have a gap a space for seeing to take place. And what you see sets you free because you're the ultimate seer that sees it all. By the end, few things I've noticed. A physical healing was going on 
emotional healing was going on, a mental healing was going on, and the silence remained. Therefore, when we inquire and we question our mind, is not that we always going to meet or experience silence. We're going to meet all the layers that cover the silence, which is you. And as you're willing to go through all of them, pierce through them with your clear mind, clear seeing, clear sight, higher intelligence, then the space is cleared and cleared and opens for the silence which is you to remain unobstructed, shining by itself to itself, even if it is for a momentary, for a glimpse. As you recognize these glimpses more and more, you recognize that you are ever present as presence itself that you're always here, no matter what's going on, no matter what is happening, nothing is really happening to you because you are unmoved, untouched, unaffected. Everything that is happening is happening for you to realize it or in question if it is the real you or you are the one who's watching it all. So questioning your mind enables you to meet what arises within you without resistance, with an inner action, with clarity. When your mind is clear, then you experience clarity. And when there's clarity, then your attention can be shifted. The mind can rest at peace within you, which is immovable, changeless awareness. Just recognize it right now. If your mind is not interested in that which is prior to it, just watch how the mind plays tricks to be in the front of the stage instead of you being at the, at the back. Watch it all and just question, from where am I watching? Who is see seeing the thoughts? Do I have a thought right now? Ask yourself, how does it feel for you right now? What is your experience, your innermost experience? Does it feel great? Peaceful? Joyful? Silence.
Why questioning your mind can reveal that which is already here? When we learn something, we ask questions around it. When we want to learn who we truly are, we want to ask questions around ourselves. Who am I? Am I the movement of the mind only? Am I a conceptual image only? Do I have an image right now? When there is no thought, do I cease to exist? What would be the next thought? If I don't question the mind, and let's say I'm very emotional. I can cry all day long and try to release the emotion. Yet the beauty is that if I resist it, I basically pump energy into it. Yet if I question, and I question to sincerely see and explore, there is no resistance within me. It withdraws the energy out of it. It allows the energy to move freely and release itself. And that's another reason inquiry is so key and essential to question your mind. Instead of just believing your mind, don't believe your mind, question your mind. So, as you question, you gain clarity. If you don't question and you believe your mind to be you, then you instantaneously identify it with you. You derive your identity from it. And as you derive your identity from it, that means you don't have the clarity. Then you derive your identity from emotional pain, you derive your identity from a reactivity, you derive your identity from judgment, you derive your identity from frustration, you derive your identity from anger, you derive your identity from what is not real, you derive your identity from an idea that out of habit you tended to believe to be real. Yet your true identi identity is prior to any thought, prior to any belief, prior to any habit. It is listening to these words right now. It is the ultimate listener, ultimate seer. Recognize it in an instant right now. No practice leads you to you, because you are already you. The practice enables to remove what's not you, so you can remain as yourself, as you. Not a you that you remember as a memory, as a story, as a conceptual image. A you that has no story storyless you, shapeless you, the pure you, that is already you.
let me touch a little bit more about questioning the mind. You can question your mind and it would be like obsessive, mechanical. That type of questioning tends to be more mechanical. So when the, the mind learns just a technique for questioning, after some time, the mind learns the trick and the question doesn't pierce anymore, doesn't open the space. It doesn't really open the window between two thought, thoughts. It doesn't open or widens the gap between two thoughts or the stream of thoughts. Questioning always have to be fresh and it's always have to be like a strike, unexpected, not mechanical and fresh with true interest and exploration wanting to find out not what you know something that is new and fresh for the first time so questioning has to be fresh and it has to be for the first time every single time Just recognize to discriminate between the two when there is a questioning that is mechanical and then you your the reaction will, of the mind would be like, it doesn't work. That would be your indication that it's too mechanical. So it's not about asking who am I, who am I, who am I? Yes? So I'll read... I'll read the uh, around inquiry some things from uh, Anamalai Swami final talks and the questioner he pointed out Bhagwan wanted to know the answer to the question who am I he seemed to find the answer straight away That means the inquiry was not mechanical. So who am I would be an example from where am I seeing? Who is looking? Who knows? Who is aware? Who is the ultimate knower? If there is no answer, you remain. If your mind answers is with dialogue, with the question, you just watch it until you strike with one question unexpectedly it's like you surprise the mind with that question Bhagwan wanted to know the answer to the question who am I he seemed to find the answer straight away. You can find the answer as well straight away. Because the answer is always here.
when I ask the question, when I try to find out what the self is, I can reject thoughts that arise as being not me. So the questioner asks, and he says, when I tried to find out what the self is, what that shows me is that the questioner is looking to find awareness or the self. You question for the sake of question or you question for the sake of questioning not because you're going to find something because of the question. It's like just come out with a question that would be unique, different. Try for yourself right now. From where are you seeing the movement of the thoughts? So this is the most direct because what apparently separates you from yourself is just one thought. When you question, the thought that separated you from yourself is gone. And when the question completes itself, and there is no mental answer, you remain. So don't question to find yourself or look for yourself. Question for the sake of questioning. So the questioner continues and says, when I try to find out what the self is, I can reject thoughts that arise as being not me. That shows me that the questioner is still discriminating actively instead of just surrender. Surrender to the question. Trust the question. I can reject thoughts that arise as being not me, but nothing else happens. I don't get the answer that Bhagwan did. So I'm beginning to wonder why I'm asking the question. So I see few things. The mind questions, but not nothing else happens. That means the mind is asking a question and it has an expectation for a particular experience. So the a mind asks a question in order to gain something. Yet the mind cannot gain awareness, so that's a trap. And then what creeps in, because the mind doesn't get what it imagines it should get or gain, then what happens is that the doubt begins to creep in. And he says, I'm beginning to wonder why I'm asking the question. So Anamalai Swami answer, you say that you're not getting the right answer. Who is this you? And 
And this is an invitation that you truly give yourself the gift to recognize who you are, truly, not conceptually, not spiritually. Deeply, knowingly. Who is not getting the right answer? The answer that can come up is, I, I don't get the right answer. And who is the one who is seeing that I? Why should I ask the question I ask? Asking has not produced the right answer for, so far. Again, it's the doubt. It's the mind resisting. Because if you keep asking, if, if you keep ex exploring, questioning, you would see whatever you see. And when there is nothing to see, you remain as the seer that sees, sees itself right now. Anamalai Swami, you should persist and not give up so easily. When you intensely inquire, who am I? The in intensity of your inquiry takes you to the real self. It is not that you are asking the wrong question. You seem to be lacking intensity in your inquiry. You need a one-pointed determination to complete this inquiry properly. Again, he's pointing about being persistent, yet the dense and the, the is to be very discriminative between mechanical questioning and when it's spontaneous, fresh, honest, sincere, with full of presence behind it. When you intensely inquire, who am I? And as I mentioned before, who am I doesn't have to be who am I. You can explore asking who am I without using this particular question. It is not that you are asking the wrong question. You seem to be lacking intensity in your inquiry. You need a one-pointed determination to complete this inquiry properly. Your real self is not the body or the mind. You will not reach the self while thoughts are dwelling on anything that is concerned with the body or the mind. That's pointing that inquiry into the self in that regard is more subtle. 
it means it has to have an inner seeing. The attention has to withdraw more within that there can be a recognition, an, an immediate recognition of a presence that has no quality of name or form, of thought or shape. Yet this quality of presence is vibrancy, aliveness. Awakeness, alertness. Peaceful. Silent. Watchful. Take it in, take it to your heart and if you have any questions if anyone want to write any question we can open the floor for some questions so I can do my best to clarify and if, for some of you it's new and first time basically we're touching the importance of inquiring questioning your mind recognizing who you truly are it doesn't matter maybe you've never heard these words the recognition can be instantaneously you can wake up to who you are recognizing who you are right now or moment by moment until the mind becomes more familiar with the recognitions by having less doubts although the recognition is beyond the mind yet the mind would have the knowing and the clarity ah okay ah okay i recognize something which is beyond after when the mind comes back when it shows up so Shana, I hope I pronounce uh, the name properly. Welcome. I smoke cigarettes and I want to stop, but when I think about wanting to stop, I get upset and I'm putting restrictions on myself. I preach health, but I smoke. Okay. that's good because it's a very nice example it can be with many different scenarios it can be about i want to lose weight yet something deep inside me doesn't want to lose the weight because it can be a protective mechanism you have to check with yourself what is it that you really really want so you, i hear i smoke cigarettes and i want to stop but when i think about wanting to stop I get upset and that I'm putting restrictions on myself so first of all you can ask yourself why do you want to stop the second thing I would go in reverse I would actually smoke Yet every time you smoke, you don't smoke anymore unconsciously. Means you take the cigarette and you inhale and you smoke. And then when you inhaling, start to think all the negative things that this cigarette, this inhalation causing you. Yeah. Start to associate every time you smoke instead of taking a puff and say, oh, this is relaxes me. No, you're smoking, you're taking a puff and this like, oh, this suffocates me. Oh, this is going to kill me. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, this is really 
makes me smell. I can't smell anything. I'm so desensitized. Oh, my fingers are being yellow from. Oh, my teeth are. Bring all your negativity in every puff you smoke. Be creative about it until you would recognize the defect of it and you say, Ooh, I turn off the, okay, I'm not going to smoke right now. I'm going to stop. Like, start to see how long you can smoke a cigarette when you bring all the negativity, the worst things, that every time you smoke, it's the worst thing for you, until these thoughts will move you to take action to turn off the cigarettes if you really want to smoke, to stop smoking. So you can approach it this way. See, your mind is very powerful. Whatever you think, it generates feelings, emotions, which affects your actions, which affects the results that you're getting. So if you would start bringing truly negative thoughts into the field as you smoke, it will generate a particular sensations that you don't like. That would lead you to stop the action of smoking, which yield to a different result. That's one way. I can shift and do another way. And again, Maybe there are many different modalities of quitting smoking and people say, oh, this is not going to work. That's going to work. The truth is you have to look at yourself in your mirror and it's all about you. You are going to make the ship. Nobody can find the right way for you. I'm just giving alternative for you to open your mind and expand and check truly what is it that you want. Why is it that you even smoke? Are you avoiding anything when you smoke? What is the worst thing that would happen if you smoke, if you stop smoking? So you can go the, the, the other polarity is to check, okay, I want to smoke, to stop smoking. And when I stop smoking, ha start to visualize how is it going to be for you? Maybe you forgot how it feels. How would you feel? How start to go into, wow, this is going to be really wonderful. I'm going to be not dependent. I'm not going to be enslaved by the need. I would be able to look at it. That's one direction. The other direction is like, anytime you decide you're going to, you, okay, you decide, I'm going to smoke three cigarettes a day, five cigarettes a day. If you're smoking 20, you decide, okay, today I'm going to smoke 10. Yet every time I'm going to go and smoke the 10 cigarettes or the one in that moment, you're going to sit or stop before you mechanically, unconsciously pulling out the cigarette from the box, rolling it, whatever it is. If you roll the cigarettes, before you even reach for them, watch and see how what's going on in your body. What's going on? What are you avoiding to take an action that takes your attention outwardly? And then you watch. You roll the cigarette, you put it aside, you don't light it. You watch what's going on internally which thoughts you have, and what emotions coming into the surface. If you pull a cigarette, don't light it. Put it in your mouth, watch. Maybe you'll decide, okay, you know what? I'm going to light it a little bit later. Delay and delay 
and delay and delay until you realize that you can be with what's coming into the surface in your mind and your physical body that you don't need a distraction to shift your attention from it. So I hope that was helpful. If you have more questions around it, please ask. Sergey, hi Sergey, you are welcome. If I don't feel so good, what I need to do is to question is to question myself. Who is the one who is seeing the one who don't feel good? Then surrender to it till it's vanishing. Is it right? Thank you. Okay, if you don't feel good, you can approach the questioning in a different way. You can approach it with a statement and a question. I'm supposed to feel good. And you ask, is it true? I'm not supposed to experience what I'm experiencing. Is it true? I'm supposed to feel good right now. Is it true? The experiencing I'm experiencing is not good. Is it true? The experience is not for my highest good. Is that true? As you approach that way, the question, the statement and the question, your mind instantaneously gets clear. When there is clarity, you might be already in a focused attention, which is a state of meditation, that your attention is inward enough that you recognize that you are just watching it all, watching the leftover of the sensation or the feelings. You're just being with it as the silent watcher. That's another approach. It's a very effective approach when there is pain, emotional pain, physical pain. It's a statement and a question. You don't even need to answer the question. Because you are the answer of the question. Good. I hope that was helpful. If anybody wants to raise their hand and ask the question verbally, you're welcome to do so. I would notice. Then I can bring your question. Everybody can hear your question. And then I can answer and there can be a dialogue. There is a small hand, I think, somewhere. And that hand, um, I would see the hand. And I will see if I can open that for everyone to hear. Oh, I see an, a hand. I open it. Okay, Anna. Can uh, you speak? Can we hear you? You need, I think, to approve. Hmm? Unmute. Unmute yourself. There is a speaker. And you just unmute yourself so you can speak. There's like a speaker and a, and a line. So the line has to be free. Mm. Can we check here everything? I approved it.
Anna, you connected to our audio. Just if you can uh, try to speak or unmute yourself. Okay, you have only a question. Okay, let's see the question. Let me read something. Meanwhile, until I get the question to see it. The one obstacle is the mind. It must be got over whether it is whether in the home or in the forest. The one obstacle is the mind. It must be got over whether in the home or in the forest. Your efforts can be made even now, whatever be the environment. It's point that the whole work is with the mind and when there's no thoughts your attention is shifted and rested on who you truly are and it's moment by moment so inquiry into the self i can uh, read another short part of how anamalai points about self-inquiry so people can understand it has layers, it has depth. Self-inquiry is the process by which attention is put on the source instead of on names and forms that are habitually imposed on it. So self-inquiry is the process by which attention is put on yourself, your true self, instead of thoughts, and the body forms and the attention is put on the body and thoughts habitually so the more your attention is withdrawn to even thoughts and awareness movement and stillness then the attention can be fixed on that which never moves it can be experienced right now. It's like I recognize that I am the stillness and the words are just spoken by themselves through me. Yet the experience that I don't move, I don't change. Yet the change takes place within me. Yet I remain changeless. That's another layer and example of self-inquiry. Self-inquiry is the process by which attention is put on your real self instead of on names, thoughts, the mind, and forms, which is the body, that are habitually imposed on it. That means imposed, they are superimposed upon it, like you put like an algae is imposed on the water so it covers the water and that way the algae does not it does not able does not it the word is i doesn't come for me the word the water is not able to reveal itself because it is underneath the algae Okay, so there's no, no questions. So let's see if I can, what does it mean to be still? We can go back to any, any reactivity 
It's not a simple practice, yet it's the simplest practice. Stillness, it can imply physically, it can imply verbally, and it can imply mentally. For instance, somebody says something and right away triggers you a reaction. You're like upset. So it's like a surge of energy that is released, like an explosion, an eruption. If you can just verbally not say anything, that's stillness, not the ultimate stillness, yet you are watching now. What you're watching is non-reaction or verbal reaction, then you're meeting your verb mental reaction, and what it generates is emotional reaction. And usually, the reason we just blah, blah, blah out so quickly out of habit is that that's that bodily sensation moved us to reactivity verbally. If we stop, we suddenly notice the vibration in the body that we were trying to avoid and that's why we reacted verbally. So let's say somebody tells us something and we got upset. If we can and not say anything and just feel the feelings that it generated, which is a physical reaction in the body and be with that, that's very powerful. You will feel that you have inner strength. Then you can question, like, this person is not supposed to talk to me this way. Is it true? I'm affected by this person. Is it true? Something outside of me can affect me. Is it true? The circumstances affecting me. Is it true? If I wouldn't have any belief, I will be affected. Is it true? I cannot handle this emotion. Is it true? I am unconscious. Is it true? So that's example. Another that enables you right away to gain clarity. And when your mind is clear, you will start to see that it's so sweet. It's really taking control over what you were slave, enslaved by, automatically re reacted to, and that basically you can't stop it. Another version would be somebody insults you and you react verbally. You already reacted verbally. The moment you catch yourself because it feels not good, unless you derive your identity, if you catch it and you stop, you would notice now the vibration that already is reactive in your physical body, that out of habit, automatically you hate, and you go through the same process. This experience is awful. Is it true? I can't handle this experience. Is it true? I'm a slave to this experience. Is it true? This experience is affecting me. Is it true? So that's on the verbal level. Another would be, let's say, I want to smoke. So I have the thought, if I don't catch the desire, maybe I catch it when I take out the cigarette and then I see the cigarette and it's like, oh, I'm gonna, I want to smoke, yet I want to stop smoking. So I just put the cigarette and I don't take action. I'm just watching. I'm watching, watching, 
learning what's going on inside me. And then I can question. I want to smoke. Is it true? Smoking makes me feel good. Is it true? I'm not avoiding anything by smoking. Is it true? Smoking will give me what I want. Is it true? One of the things that were a miracle for me is that I noticed that the person she shared with me at the end of the journey that we did and what was amazing that the moment she was resisting it was driving her crazy the thoughts and emotion the moment she was willing to question and be with that means no resisting she allowed it to free free itself the energy was released what's the beauty what's the beautiful about it that in the end when she was willing to question and follow the question she recognized that she had the choice to go in the direction she wanted which are higher vibration more positive or she had the choice to go in the negative side the resistance side and she made a conscious choice to go into a direction that was not what she's used to habitually and remember if you look and now you see my hands possibly yet when you listen to it if you have a certain you go a certain direction and you choose something new and you keep moving in the new direction it will take you to a place that you don't know you're not familiar which means the change that occurs takes you to another dimension that you're not familiar and that sets you free from the habit that you're familiar somebody wanted to ask i thought somebody wanted to uh, raise yeah carla so wonderful that you're here i connect you to the audio can you speak now yes do you hear me yes yes yes, yes. hola kali it's good to have you hola, hello. i'm so happy yeah i'm happy to alone i have to see you again um my question is i have been experiencing as you already know for more than a year a lot of um pain in my body and also emotional pain so i have realized that my mind right now is so focused on my body and my emotions that i feel so disconnected from um from the source i i i can only think about what is happening to me in my body the sickness in my emotions so it's been very very hard to withdraw from that um i cannot even be more than two minutes in stillness so i was wondering if i have to begin or start from the beginning uh, a few minutes and maybe trying to get my mind focused on um, and I am or just uh, something that you can give me to to start again like like a new um, puppet or, or a new I mean puppy uh, a new baby okay so are you sitting right now yes good so can you be still for a moment okay. and just you can watch me yes good so can you describe what's what you feel very short brief 
Yes, anxiety. Okay. And where do you feel the anxiety right now? In my chest. Good. And can you go into it by fixing the attention there? Okay. You're there? Your attention is there? Yes. Good. Do you have any thoughts? I didn't have any thought, any thoughts, just for a few seconds. Okay. And how did it feel? It feel all right, but um, suddenly I wanted to, to cry. Okay. Can you allow it? Yeah. Okay. Are you aware of the crying? Yes. Okay. And where, where would you like your attention to go right now? You choose. Uh, okay. Um, it's very hard because the anxiety is very strong. Okay. So it, it is uh, keeping my mind there. Go there. Wherever your mind wants to go, and that's for everyone. Wherever your mind wants to go, don't try to pull it back from there. It's basically the attention wants to go there because there's something for you to see there. So if you're willing to go, then you're not resisting. If you try to pull away from it, you're resisting, you, you, pull more, you pump more energy into it. The resistance exaggerates. It exaggerates the sensation in order for you eventually or your mind to, to put the attention there. So put your attention there. Yeah. And tell me what you feel. Um, I'm better. I I don't feel the anxiety so strong. I'm sweating a lot. Okay. Um, my mind is more more quiet. Okay. Now, tell me if you have thoughts. Do you see your mind right now? Just look within, with your inner eye. Do you see your mind? Everyone is welcome to explore it for themselves. Suddenly I uh, felt happiness. Happiness. And how happiness feels? <laughs> For me, it's not to have anxiety. <laughs> how does happiness feel? Happy? Yes. <laughs> I am better. This is the power of stillness. If you can just be still for an instant, it allows everything that is trapped even for that instant to free itself. So it withdraw energy from it. It allows that energy to start the process of moving. And it's almost like one of the things that during the day, you can send love to that place. You can send love to yourself. I love, I send love to this place. You can even visualize an energy. So what healing energy can you send there? What color would it be? Gold, purple, green. Can you imagine anything comes in spontaneously for you? Not what I think. Yes. What energy would you yeah. feel that? Like 
ocean energy, like being on the ocean. Okay. A so, very uh, light blue turquoise. Okay. Color. Yeah. So allow that that energy to just kind of feel that area, wash that area. Tell me how it feels. It feels great, really. Good, very good, very good. It's like if I um, had this big burden and I don't, I don't have it anymore. Good, very good, wonderful. Anything else? Thank you very much. That, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. It's nice to have just for an instant the carriage to just take a look. Just take a look. And remember, life is only right now. So it's moment to moment. Yes, so always, even if we didn't take a look one moment, we have the next moment, the opportunity. So, Rodica. 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 Okay, can you hear me now? I unmuted myself. Yes, we can, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So, um, my state of mind is confusion. Um, I hear you say stillness, being still, focus the attention on the real, on the real self, on the true you, and, and try that as, as much as possible throughout the day. And then you say, you, you just, Tell, told the person before me speaking that follow the mind to where it wants to go. It, it will pull you, it will call you, it will call your attention to what needs to be released. So I hear, I hear, I hear and I think I understand what, what you're trying to say, but how do I know when to follow the mind and when not to follow the mind? I'm a little confused because if I follow the mind, it can really take you to to really obnoxious experiences and all that. So I'm trying more and more to be still and to to not to follow the mind. But then sometimes you said you have to follow the mind. To, you know what I mean. When you try to be still and your mind pulls you a different direction, it creates a conflict inwardly. And when you try to fight with the mind, it's always wins. Yes. So it's almost you have, it's like a child, you allow it to go where it wants to. And when it goes the direction, you steer it from there. It's like um, you blend with the mind instead of trying to pull away. And it, de it depends what is the circumstances too. When there is emotion and it's, all, it's already a physical reaction in the body, mm -hmm. habitually we are much more, the attention of the mind to go there is very easy because it is conditioned to it. It's used to do it for mm -hmm. so long. Yes? You yes. agree? Yes. So I can go with the mind towards the point, the physical sensation in the body, and that would be the entrance point to awareness. It can be also noise that is outside. I can focus the attention on a particular noise, and when the attention is, is on the noise, 
it's already passed. So if the attention is focused, it's another point of entrance. Okay? Yes. So, so what are you afraid that your mind will take you if you follow the mind? Give me example. I'm not afraid to follow the mind because I've been doing this for quite a long time and I've realized, um, I've been listening to you for an hour and a half and I've, uh, I've recognized the truth in what you're saying in my own experience. So I'm not afraid that the mind will take me to some childhood experiences that were frightening and, and so I've unleashed a lot of that. I'm not afraid that the mind will take me to, to an unpleasant experience. I'm not trying to, uh, to avoid those unpleasant experiences. I've, I think I've, I've allowed them for a long time to be inside me. So I'm not afraid of that. I'm just tired of that monkey noise, that constant, incessant noise of the mind. So I'm not afraid that the mind will take me somewhere where I don't like to go. I'm just simply tired of the constant, incessant noise of the mind, which, which by the way, I'm watching. I'm watching from behind and I see the nonsense of it. I see the, the, the ridiculousness of all these thoughts put together. It goes from here to there. To, it goes from to 30 scenarios in less than 30 seconds. It, it's amazing. This is a, what I what I I'm trying not to follow and to 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 stay away from that. Except you can't, because who is the one that is trying to stay away from that? Some part of the mind, probably a part of the mind that is tired of watching another part of the mind that is going to a million places, right? So the mind fragments itself. So it's still not the true, the real me that is tired of all of that because the true me cannot be tired of all of that. So maybe the mind splits itself in different places and one part of the mind is tired of watching all that incessant noise. Okay. Is it true? Okay, almost. Le, the question, then I ask another question, if you don't mind. Yes. Which thoughts not going to make you tired? Like, can you give me a phrase that would not make you resistant to the thoughts? Like, I'll give you an example. I direct the thoughts easily and effortlessly. You like that? Or you Yes, I like I like that or something like I am peaceful. Um I I allow myself to be in harmony within me with all the parts of me, something like that along okay. those lines. So you can choose let's say for, and I don't know what is the best for you. I'm just giving scenarios and example. Each one can take for themselves what suits them best. Yes. Okay. Because yes. you're a student of yourself. So you have to study yourself and figure out. And it's moment by moment can shift and change for you and everybody, all of us. Okay. 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 Can I interrupt you for one second? Before you do so. so Before you okay. do so. Yes. You can choose one or two or three sentences that you're going to repeat during the day. That means you are consciously and de deliberately think these particular thoughts that makes you feel great, that empowers you because you are the source of all power. So if you think this thought that empowers you, it gives you a boost of energy, it's a higher vibration, that means it's closer to your being, to who you are, to the stillness, to the silence, to this unshakable peace, which is you, which is the highest vibration, the pure vibration, yes? So it, yes. Can, it can be, I am, I am peaceful, 
I am peaceful, healthy, and happy. I am peaceful. I'm just giving examples. You can write them down. I am, I am unshakable peace. I am peaceful, restful, and blissful. Perfect. I am peaceful, light, and happy. I am light, happy, and healthy. I am ever free. As you direct the thoughts into a higher vibration, even for some time, you start to see that the thoughts are not an enemy. And you can choose the thoughts that you want to think that is on a higher vibration. That actually does something in the mind. I won't get into it right now. It trains the mind to be more focused. That means it trains the prana within you to be more in a movement that is um, con that it has a continuity, a flow, like Ramana calls it oil, the flow of the oil flowing uninterruptedly then the mind, when there's no resistance, rests much easily, easier. Yes, yes. And then you can, when the thoughts are obnoxi obnox obnoxious to you, mm -hmm. yes. just you can choose to let go of these thoughts. I, I send them love and set myself yes. free. I yes. choose to let go of them and set myself free. And you just... You saw the mind reacting to a particular thoughts. That means it resists. When you resist any thoughts, you mm -hmm. get attached to them. That means they replay themselves more and more and more. And that's what I meant to go with the mind. Yes. Is it clear? It's very clear. And I thank you so much because I have been doing, uh, I call them affirmations or positive talk. I'm, I've, I'm doing this for a long time and I, I feel that it helps me feel better and, and it's beneficial. But I wasn't sure within a bigger scheme of things if, if this is okay to do or it's just the, still the mind split and it talks to itself like, I don't know anymore. Um, so what, what you've said uh, reaffirms what I have been doing and it, 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 just, it just makes me more peaceful within myself that I'm on the right path. And, and eventually it will slow down and it will, it will be, you know, where it needs to be. But for, for right now, this is what I needed to hear from you. So it, it helps a lot. Thank you so much. Very good. It's... It's not even about affirmations. It's about directing the mind and the particular thoughts that if you hold on to these thoughts, you can never suffer. Yes, it's true. Yeah, when true. all my suffering, the thoughts that torment me are around the physical body. So when I hold the thought like, I am ever free, it has nothing to do with the physical body. I am fully awake and complete. It has nothing to do with the body. So when you hold that thought, or I am boundless awareness, you cannot suffer. Only when you think, I am somebody. That's yes. when you start to suffer. Or I don't want this. I want something else. I'm not supposed yes. to have these obnoxious thoughts. That's when you start to suffer. You start to fight with the thoughts. And that thought just appeared. And if you can watch them and, and allow them, they just complete the sums, themselves and disappear. And do you recognize what is already here within you at this moment? Yes. Can you, can you tell me what you experience? Right now I feel a, a big relief um, f from, the, from a thought that was 
that kept coming to me and said, okay, who, who, I was aware of, of this whole mental noise, that mental activity, and I realized physically and mentally, I realized that speaking the, the better thoughts, the higher vibration thoughts that you mentioned that I have been doing, um, made me feel better. But then I, I, I kept questioning that, like who, 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 no. Come back once. Who is, Tell me what's going on inside you in this moment. Right now, right now, I feel big relief and and uh, happiness because what you said confirmed what I already knew. Good, good. That means all the knowledge is within you. That means that you're amazing. Yes. That means all the wisdom, all the knowing is within you. Follow this guidance. That would That's be the it. most accurate for you, always. That's it. I, and I feel that deep inside me, I feel that. I'm, and I've always felt that. So I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just sense what's going on inside. Sense if you feel there's a presence, say. Yeah, presence. Spaciousness. It's like silence emanating, transmitting. Maybe you can sense this transmission of silence. And it's good just to have these recognitions. The more you have these recognitions, the more you establish in the knowing of who you are, undoubt, undoubtedly, regardless to what's happening. There is the knowing that I'm unaffected. It doesn't matter what happens. Nothing ever touches me. I'm always free. I'm always here. I've been asked last time to share the Maya story. So I haven't shared it for some time, so I hope I remember it correctly. And the Maya story represents from the beingness of who you are, which is the source, prior to creation, prior to any movement, prior to any thought, how this whole manifestation, the power of illusion, created this whole illusion, this whole phenomena, and the way back, returning back to the source. And it appears like an, uh, just a story, yet this story actually shows you the way back in, because the way the knowledge is, is that just like if you go into the woods and you're not confident that you'll find your way back, so 
at times when I used to go to the woods and I wasn't sure that I would know my way out. So what I did, I took a yellow strap, like a, it's like a tape, except it has no glue. And I would cut, put it around the tree, keep walking a few hundred meters so I can see from the last place. I tie another orange strap. And that way I walked into the ocean or the lake that I wanted. And I, I marked my way when I went into the forest. And when I was coming back a few days later, then I would follow the straps back, hopefully that nobody removed them. And I came back to where I started, the starting point. So our minds, or in the tradition in Advaita, they call it Maya, then the power of illusion. She, when she created, the whole world, the universe, the phenomena, she um, used the same principles for creation and she marked her way back prior to creation itself. So a knowledge is the marks for her to return. It's the higher intelligence within us. And that's basically represents also the Maya story. So the Maya story begins like that. There is the source, and the source is defined as beginningless, endless. It, it is changeless. It, uh, it, has, it is everywhere, and there is no place it is not. It is within everyone, and everyone is within it. The source is everywhere, simultaneously, at all times. That means it permeates everything, just like space. It's more even subtle, so it permeates everything. From the source, which is everywhere, simultaneously, at all times, it is within everyone and everyone is within it. So everyone has the source within it. From that source, Maya came out. Maya is beginningless, she has no beginning, although she has an end. Maya has two faces. One face, she's looking at the source, and all she knows is the source itself. The other face is looking out, and the moment she looks out, she forgets the face looking it. So the moment she looks out, she falls into forgetfulness, which is another word, darkness ignorance, confusion. The moment she forgets the face looking in, she gets scared and she starts to create. So Maya has two faces. One face she's looking at the source and all she knows is the source. The other face is looking out and she forgets looking it in, the face looking in. Maya has the power of the source within her. So she has the power to create everything she wants except the source itself. So Maya is like a seed. Within the seed, we have the potential of the whole forest. One seed, one tree. From that tree, there are many, many seeds. From these many, many seeds, there are many, many trees and many trees, the whole forest. Yet if you take from the seed any of the five elements, which is space, air, fire, water, and earth, the seed with all its potential cannot manifest to a whole forest. So Maya is the same way. If you take the source away, Maya cannot appear and cannot manifest anything, and cannot appear to be real. So Maya has two faces. One face is looking. One face is looking. You complete it. The moment she's looking out, and she forgets the face looking, then she gets scared. The moment she gets scared, she starts to create. She create the ether of space, then the air, then the fire, 
then the water, then the earth. And then she continues to create. So Maya has the power of creation within her and she creates everything she wants. The moment she gets scared, she begins to create. So her first creation is I. So Maya is the first thought, I. And then she starts to move to my, my body, my parents, my friends, my house, my toys, my religion, my, 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 my. So she creates the I, and then she starts to move to my, 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 my. Now when she's encountered the knowledge, she realizes that she's in such forgetfulness, and the knowledge reminds her what she already forgot. So she's starting to turn the face looking in, and she started going through her eyes, through the eye, back to the source. That's how she's returning back to who you truly are. That means that none of you, all of us, never really gain the source because we never left the source. We just, the mind is just returning back to where it came from, where it arises from. There is another analogy for the Maya story in another way. There was a man that he was living in India and he went to his room and he fell asleep. And in the sleep, he started dreaming that he is a student and he's going to study in architect, architecture and then, or becoming an architect. And he decide he start to save money so he can go to the best archi, 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 to go to study being an architect in a university. And he decides that the best place is to fly to Italy. So he works for a couple of years, he saves enough money and he flies to Italy. And then he gets to Italy and he's starting the first year and second year and third year and fourth year and he's graduating and, and then he's doing, a, a, he becomes an apprentice and then he starts designing different structures and he's very good and he's very successful. Then he meets a woman and he has children, he has a family. And then one day he realized, wow, I haven't seen the family in India for so many years and now I'm all I have, I'm financially also set so I this he decided to take all his family to India back so he decides he buy the ticket and he flies to India and when he gets to India he wakes up in the room and he realized that it was all a dream and that he never left the room. So awakening is to realize that the one who dream is just dreaming a dream within that, within awareness that never dreamt anything. And then you realize that you just were thinking that everything is happening, yet truthfully, Nothing ever happened. Nothing is ever happening and nothing will ever happen. And you realize that you remain where you are in a way where you thought you started. You end up at the same place, which is the source of awareness, which is you. So the whole journey is the, for the mind to return back to you. It's not you returning back to the source. Just remember that. And listen to the Maya story. Take it within. It's a very simple story. It's from the source. And Maya, she has the power to create anything she wants, except the source itself. So the first thought is I. And that's where Maya begins. Or that's when she appears. Because I'm saying that Maya is 
is actually in the unmanifesting stage as well. And that's why she's beginning this. And then she starts to move from I to my, which can be also I to this. I, this body, these objects, these things, these people, these, these ideas, these beliefs. And then she getting far away from the I. So she turns back through the this, through the I, back to the source. So one last question, and we will end for today. Denise, hi Denise, welcome. Could it be possible that a situation would call for anger in a situation? Of course, you don't have a choice because when you're angry at a situation, that means it awoke in a belief in you that it's it's supposed to be different. It should have been different. And that triggers right away the anger. How you approach it, that's the choice you have. The anger, when it arises, it's like an explosion. So you're watching that too. And then you have the choice how to approach it. You can ex examine it or later on take a moment and examine it. Each one has its own time lag to really question what's going on. Was I affected by the situation or I was affected by a belief I had and that triggered an emotion, a physical reaction within me? For example, if we see someone treating someone very badly or being submissive to them, then could it be possible that to get anger would be what comes from the inner stillness rather than, than it being a reactive angry? Everything rises from the stillness. Yet, if you derive your identity from stillness and you watching this event from stillness, your mind is clear and you recognize that if somebody is treating somebody else, both of them need it because otherwise it wouldn't happen. So I attract exactly what I need and that would be in the other circumstances and whatever the other brings, they need it too. So it's a good question to ask in which position is it better to be? The offenser or the one who's being offensed by? I don't remember the words exactly. In what position is the uh, better position to be? So that one has to check with themselves. Don't try to miss um, There can be many people listening to this and each one would interpret it from their understanding and point of view. If you're angry, then be aware of that. That means accepting it. Awareness means is accepting it, loving it, embracing it, not judging it, and then approach it with clarity. Examine, are you affected by the circumstances or by, or by your belief? And are you affected because that's something that you don't want it to happen to you? So that scares you? Or can you see everything in equal eyes? Means your eyes sees all the object in an equal manner. Awareness has no preferences. So if your filter of your mind is not reactive or active, you would see everything as perfect as it is. If you cannot see it from that place, that's fine too. Work with whatever arises within you. Be aware of three things. It's ultimately four. Your physical sensations, emotions, thoughts, and who you truly are, which is awareness. Know who you are thoroughly, all of it. So it's all inclusive. Don't exclude something by turning your awareness from it 
because you are avoiding it, because you are resisting it. I hope this was very helpful and uh, it gave some tools that are practical, like questioning your mind and um, discriminating and understanding the power of stillness. From stillness, everything arises. Stillness is your original, original experience, your innermost essence. Creativity rises from there. So everything, creativity rises from there. Negativity rises from there. Awareness embraces everything. Learn how to embrace everything. Find the path of least resistance. Resistant. See what works for you at any given moment because it is in motion, changing. Yes. And um, and uh, Alejandra uh, mentioned. Hi, Alon. Thanks so much for your teachings. You were talking about verbal stillness and action stillness, but never got to mental stillness. You're right. You're right. Uh, could you give one example on how to do to to do so to do this? I will uh, videotape the answer. And uh, we will send to all of you, and you can look for it as well in uh, uh, the website. It's alongeva.com, and there is the webinars, the three before, and the ones that we did today will be up there, out there, so you can listen. And the site is right now quite empty. There's only the webinars. I will slowly put practices, I will video and load them up so people will, that can go back and see it. And um, I will give the answer to your question um, either in video or next call. I wish you all the very best. I'm very grateful that you stayed. I'm very grateful that you took the time to really sense the presence of who you are. I hope you really recognize yourself as being yourself, even as a glimpse. So you, there is the beginning of flowering within you. And any questions you have, any subject you want to touch, anything you want that I'll explain, anything that you like that we go deeper into, please write, write to me and I'll do the best to relate to it, either I'll video or I will um, touch it the next webinar. I'm not necessarily going to start writing back. That way, um, it will be more available to everyone. If you write the question, that way I can read the question and then give the answer. And either I'll do it audio or videotape and send to all of you in the email. You can pass this uh, to other people if you think it's beneficial. So you can uh, uh, spread the word out if you think anybody can benefit knowing who they truly are, learning to work with their thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensation, learn to discriminate, learn to concentrate their mind, learn to meditate, learn, learn whatever one wants to learn regarding knowing who they truly are, know thyself, wake up and be free. And um, I invite all of you to make it dynamic. Some of the emails goes to promotion and spam. So check it. 
that the service does so it's not something that we can control and uh, let's keep the channel open and let's uh, dive deep within moment by moment for the rest of one's life i thank you so much and eternal peace for all